Welcome cultists. This is the Cult of Paint channel. My name is Andy and in this video I'm going to take you through how to paint Lumineth Realm Lords. I have always been a huge High Elf fan since I was a kid. I've had a couple of armies in the past and when Games Workshop first showed the Lumineth Realm Lords I knew I wanted to do them, but I didn't know when I would fit it in with painting all my other stuff. But when they said there was a second wave coming and I loved those models, I was like, right, now is the time. I need to get the first wave of models done and then when those new ones come, I can buy those guilt-free and get them painted up. The first model I painted was the Light of Altharian just an epic model and I did that for Patreon but it was a really nice model to practice my scheme for the army and figure some colours out. Uh, that video is actually 2 hours and 40 minutes long so if you want a really in-depth video go check out that on our Patreon. Uh, but since then I've worked out how to convert that kind of character painting and all those recipes into the army painting and painting all the all the troops and that's what this video is all about. I get really inspired by the artwork of Games Workshop, it makes me want to paint the models more and it helps me come up with cool colour schemes and when I got the battle tome through the post I just loved that front cover and when I looked at the armour I found it really interesting how the shadows were a violet or a grey with some violet in it and then I loved the highlights or the kind of white actually had some yellowish orange uh, light as if the sun was hitting it and I knew this is the colour I want to uh, try and create. After a lot of experimentation painting five different spearmen and Eltharian I came up with these colours and it was quite difficult to trim down a complex idea into a very simple recipe of three paints but I'm really happy with this Warp Fiend Grey for the purplish tone in the shadows, Ultheran Grey for the kind of main mid-tone, that kind of almost white bluish grey, and then finally an interesting one is using AK Light Flesh, and that's actually for the final highlight. And I've been using this paint a lot for my NMM, so I knew it would work to create that slightly off-white colourful final highlight. In terms of prep, I fully built the model. I thought, oh, I'm going to regret putting the shields on, but actually it was fine in the end. And I just made some little stones out of putty to match those awesome underworld spaces. I really liked those, so uh, just put a few of those on. So we're going to airbrush the first stages. And uh, what I have here is actually my airbrush. And on the back, you can see it says P001. And that's because it's the first ever prototype of the Cult of Paint Infinity. Uh, and I'm still using it now. Uh, as it's a new army, I've actually treated myself to a brand new airbrush. Um, so yeah, I've been using that original prototype. This one, number 1411. Uh, my airbrush still works amazing, to be honest. But uh, I just fancied a new one for this new army. So I'm just checking the headset is tight and uh, I'm going to change that small cup to the larger one because I'm painting an army. So yeah, this will be great. New army, new brush. So let's get on with some painting now. I'm going to start with the Warp Fiend Grey from Games Workshop. It's a lovely colour, but the coverage isn't fantastic. So this is going to take you a few coats to reach that full opacity. You really need to build it up and get it nice and opaque to get that really nice colour we're looking for. We're saving time by using the airbrush, so I think it's absolutely fine to do three or four layers of this just to make it super clean and super smooth. So you can see once we've built that up, it looks really nice. It looks really purple right now, but when we put the highlights over the top, it will look nice, I promise you. And the next colour we're going to use is the Orthoan Grey. So with this, you're just trying to leave a small amount of that previous Warp Fiend Grey in the shadows, 
And again, you need to do this in probably only a couple coats now, but you still want to try and build it up slowly, smoothly, and we want it to be diluted so you don't get speckling. If your paint is too thick, that's when you get that speckling from the airbrush. So we're just trying to avoid that. You can see what it's like on the first pass here, not that intense. And then with the second pass, it looks almost white, to be honest. It's very pale gray, but nice and smooth, building up slowly. And then we're just adjusting the volume of those highlights too. So that stage covers most of the model. And now we do our final highlight with light flesh. And this is just, you know, on the armor, I actually want the cloth to be a little bit darker. So I'm just using this highlight like it's a slightly shinier white. So that's looking really good. The final step is a step I do on pretty much every model. And that's just to go back to the base color and do it as a glaze. So you're gonna dilute this so it's very translucent and we're just reinforcing the shadows so we can adjust the volume if we've lost the shadow and we've covered it up too much, but we can also smooth it out. This can help get rid of that speckling. You can see I've got a little bit there, so it just smooths it out and adjusts everything really nicely. A uh, really nice way to paint. One of the cool things about doing this white scheme is it's almost like a pre-highlight, so we're gonna take advantage of that and start with the skin and I'm using a wash of Night Quester Flesh from Citadel, and I love this color just because I think it's really natural, it's quite desaturated, and uh, you could use the Gilliman Flesh Contrast Wash, but I really like this color, and uh, it flows in the recesses just as well. That wash really helps us to see where the eyeballs are, so we're going to conquer that now, and I'm just gonna highlight the eye with the same light flesh we used the armor for, mostly because it's on my palette, but it's a little bit nicer than a, a pure white again. You can see I did a much better job of the eye I did off camera, and I made a bit of a mistake with the one I had to do for filming, but uh, that's why I do this now, so we can correct any mistakes. So I'm trying my best to do the black pupil of the eye on camera, major concentration on both holding still and doing the painting well. So there you go. That's not too bad for an on-camera attempt. And I thought I'd have a go at doing the white dot of the eye on camera, uh, but I just painted it too low, as you can see. It should be up in the top right corner, which off-camera I managed to do a better job of. And that's optional, it's quite tricky getting that white dot in, so just getting neat eyes is uh, a challenge enough. But it's great to get them out of the way at this point. And then you can see what I do now is I go back to the Night Quester flesh, and I can actually make some corrections and, and just uh, yeah fix any mistakes around that eye. It's a fantastic way of doing uh, these eyes. So with the eyes out of the way, we just highlight up the skin mixing Night Quester with some AK basic skin and uh, just where that wash hasn't sort of gone over the raised areas, we just reinforce that nice and simple and uh, it's perfect for when you've got this recessed face within these helmets, nice and quick actually. With the face out of the way, one of the trickier tasks, we're gonna do some base coating now and I'm gonna use Rhinox Hide for anywhere I'm painting gold and having that matte brown underneath the gold is really good for definition, as you'll see later. It's going to be all these parts, like the trim of the shield and round there. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that done, and uh, you can see when it's finished. The only real tip I have is that you want it to be quite diluted so that it flows against those recesses really nicely. The main thing is having definition between the white and the symbol. So Actually, the main surface isn't so bad because we're gonna go over that with metallic anyway. So that's it finished. Honestly, this is the worst job on the model. So you should be happy when you get to this point. Um, it's uh, not fun. But then we can go straight into base coating our Pro Acryl Bronze. These metallics are amazing and you're really rewarded after doing that horrible Rhinox Hide stage because you can just paint those top surfaces 
and you can see in the shadows having that matte brown is just amazing. Then we just build up the highlights. I tried using Elven Gold from Scale, but found it was a little too yellow. So I mixed in some light bronze from Pro Acryl again, and uh, it made that nice uh, bleached out kind of more silvery gold, which I really like. We did a final highlight with the Pro Acryl light bronze on its own. I ended up covering most of the gold uh, with those two steps and just really let the metallics do the work. I did try doing some area highlights with the light bronze, but yeah, like I said, with metallics, I just try to apply them smooth and, and really just let them do all the work. We're choosing metallics for their finish, so I just like to use great colors and get them on nicely. So there you have the gold finished, and hopefully you agree that that Rhinox Hide step was worth it because that sharp brown line between them really makes it stand out. And like I said, just having it smooth and uh, letting them do the work is perfect. And these metallics are so great. I feel you just need to take your time applying them smoothly. Base coating the silvers now, and we're using black metal from Scale. And again, we're choosing this just because it's super smooth and it just goes on really nicely. And the highlight is going to be back to Pro Acryl, loving their metallics and using their pale silver to pick out all those scales. And then we're going to paint the spear and I'm actually just going to paint the top half to make that bottom half look like it's in shadow. Really simple, but super effective. So we're moving through these steps pretty rapidly now. We're gonna base coat all the blue parts with scale 75 Canterbrick Blue. It takes a few coats to get it on smooth, but you're awarded with a really nice deep and matte blue. Again, the white underneath really helps this paint to get nice coverage and a wonderful color. So you can use it fairly diluted and do a couple coats with this. For highlighting, I'm just adding in some bearing blue again from scale. And interestingly, with these folds in the cloth, because they're really sharp, we just need to paint the side that's facing the light just in this highlight color. We don't really need to do any blending. We just need to differentiate those folds where one face is light and one face is the shadow. Super easy. We use the same highlight color for the plumes. It's a little bit trickier because you have to pick out those individual parts and then we just use pure bearing blue down at the bottom for those brighter highlights. The gems, again, I used that same artwork for inspiration and we're doing a lilac and we start off with this mix. And it's fairly pale to start with and just base coat all of these with that. And then we use the lilac without the sunset purple in and I like to put the highlights at the top of the gems covering most of it as if the light's hitting it. Finally, I add in some of our light skin. So we've got a uniform highlight color that's hitting our white armor. And I just add that into the lilac. And again, just do a smaller little dot at the top, just like the light's hitting it. You could use the pure light flesh as well at the end if you want it to really pop out. On the skirt, I just base coated the trim with dark gray and then highlighted it with neutral gray. So a simple one I didn't think you needed to see. And the spear I've painted all in black, nice and matte. And we're gonna highlight this with the same dark gray we uh, base coated that trim with. And this is just a cylinder. So we're gonna do quite a wide soft highlight. And to do this, I'm using the side of the brush, just getting more paint on the brush there. So yeah, use the side of the brush and then just run it along to try and get a nice soft highlight. You can see at the bottom where I practiced there, I think it looks really good to be honest. And it's, uh, it's so simple. We just have that nice shadow at the bottom. There's some cloth underneath the armor and I wanted to do that a different color. So I use scale 75 brown gray. I really like this color, so it was just a good excuse to use it. And then I highlight it with the obvious pairing of scale 75 rainy gray. Again, really simple, just picking nice colors that work with the palette, really soft gray. Again, another simple detail is painting the leather, base coated Rhinox, and then I'm highlighting with Dubai Brown. 
I tried brown leather and it was a little bit too orange, but I think this Dubai brown is a nice in between. And I'm just doing little scratches for texture on here. So simple recipe, just paint it really nicely. I wanted to make the boots another leather. So this was Rhinox hide mixed with black and highlighted with my favorite Gobi Brown. Again, really simple. We just paint it really cleanly and it allows us to do all these details with a nice variety of color. Now we're going back to the cloth and the armor just to enhance them with the brush as they've only been airbrushed so far. So I had to make a color that sort of integrated nicely in with uh, the airbrush colors. And this was the Ulthoran gray with a little bit of Warp Fiend gray in it. So you kind of have to test it when you brush it on and make sure you get a nice incremental step. I just use this to uh, pick out the detail and yeah, just enhance it nicely. On the camera, it looks super obvious, but in the hand, I found it actually blended in really easily. Just take your time to make the right mix and dilute it. And again, we're not doing many steps, so just take your time on this step to do it really, really well. Finally, I use some also and gray on its own to just pick out, again, a little bit more highlighting and some of the really small creases and folds and stuff. It made a huge difference actually, and it looked good when it was just airbrushed. We're gonna do the same thing with the armor and just use the light flesh. Even though we airbrush light flesh, because it's so much denser when we brush it on, it does make a difference. And then it's really easy to kind of blend in. You can see on the shield here, well, you can't see very well, but trust me, in the hand, this highlight looks awesome. And it just doesn't take long and it's really worthwhile. I messed up the base because I painted it Rhinox Hide and uh, it was supposed to be Gobi Brown. So I'm actually going to use my Altharian footage uh, where I did it in the correct order of painting it Gobi Brown first of all, all over. Then we give it a nice careful dry brush of Zandri Dust to pick out all those little rocks. And finally, we're gonna give it a wash with Rhinox Hide, nice and diluted. This helps get rid of that kind of dry brushy look and it makes it dark enough, really like it. I painted the earth of the base really simple because I always wanted to cover the bases in a lot of grass. I really love uh, games like Zelda Breath of the Wild where he's just running through fields and uh, it's not very grim dark. I'm going for very happy elves running through the fields. And these gamers grass tufts are absolutely fantastic. They're really matte and really nice colors and they just look super natural, which means if you put a lot of them on your base, then in my opinion, it doesn't look silly. When I added them to my Altharian, I was pretty excited because it's always nice to have a good basing scheme. It really makes it and the green just complements the white and the blues so so well so I stuck kind of as many on as I could where it didn't look stupid in my opinion so make sure you check out gamers grass I'm gonna put the link to the exact ones I used in the description but yeah they're probably the best tufts I've used so far so love those and that's it folks I hope you like the result I'm really happy with it and currently I'm working on doing another 19 of these so I've got a full unit of 20. I really want my army to look awesome but of course it can't take forever so I hope you see what I tried to do was have not very many steps for each individual part but just try them do them really nicely so a lot of it was just maybe a base and a highlight but we just do it smoothly cleanly and with the right color choices, it can actually look awesome with very few stages. And I hope you see that. And even though it looks really nice, it's still possible to do some army painting like this. I also think it allows you to match it with your characters like it has done with my Altharian, because all you do is just do the same colors and things, but you can just add more steps, more blending, more highlights, things like that. Looking at the leather on the two swords, you can see with Altharian, 
I've just blended that and done more steps, but it's the same kind of recipe. Uh, and that's a really nice option, so you can kind of go to town on characters if you want. But when you've got all these spearmen to do, it needs to be a little bit simpler. I found once the Rhinox hide stage was done, they were great to paint. But I must admit, blocking in that brown was pretty awful. So you have to wish me luck on the rest of these guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider checking out the Patreon, where you'll watch me paint Eltharian in a lot more depth. And I've also, at the time of releasing this video, I should be putting up tutorials for Sigvald, which was just an awesome video uh, to make. As I'm going to be painting an army of these Lumineth, I'm considering doing a video diary, so just on YouTube, showing you what units I paint, and maybe if there's any additional steps that are different on other models, I could do small tutorials on that. So if you like the sound of that, seeing updates for my army project, then stick some comments and uh, yeah, I'll try and do that. It'd be quite nice to be held accountable for finishing this army because I'm sure you can relate. It's actually really tough to keep that endurance going and, and painting a whole army. As always, if you like this video, do the liking, do the subscribing, uh, sharing helps a lot too. And uh, we really like hearing from you. So yeah, if you enjoyed it, stick some comments below. And I'm looking forward to hopefully doing some more Lumineth. Until then, see you next time.